All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Beal. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me today. I'm a corporate attorney in Los Angeles, and this is a topic that I'm very excited about. Um, it's something that I have spent a lot of time with, both professionally and personally, over the last year or so, and I've packed about as much information as I could into this presentation, so we are going to move fast. Um, I'm going to run through the outline real quick so you know what we're going to be covering and in what order we're going to cover it. Um, I would like to make one disclaimer up front, and that is, although this uh, webinar is titled A Banker's Guide to Virtual Currency, I am going to be focusing on Bitcoin. Um, it is certainly the most popular, um, certainly the most well-known, and one that I think as bankers uh, you are most likely to come in contact with in the near future. Um, so let's run through the outline real quick here. So part one, I'm going to talk about what Bitcoin is. I'm going to talk about how it works. I'm going to talk about how Bitcoins are created. Part two, I am going to address uh, some of the biggest misconceptions that I hear. And often this is a result of what's uh, printed or talked about you know, in news media. Um, but I'm going to address four um, that I think uh, will clear up some misunderstanding that some of you may have. Uh, part three, I'm going to briefly talk about merchant adoption, uh, why uh, companies providing products or services would sell those for Bitcoin, um, and, and, and the growth of that um, in recent months. Uh, part four is going to be about regulation. I, as an attorney, this is something I deal with on a daily basis. I'm going to talk about state, federal regulation. I'm also going to briefly talk about what it looks like on an international level, um, because virtual currency, in particular Bitcoin, is something that is uh, is talked about certainly in most most first world countries um, in the present day. So uh, part five is going to be, this is probably something that most of you are looking forward to, is we're going to talk about Bank Secrecy Act and AML compliance and how companies are doing that. Uh, part six is going to be about the banking relationships or lack thereof um, between virtual cur currency companies um, and banks at the moment. Um, Companies are, are struggling to um, to get and and, and secure uh, banking relationships at the moment. So we're going to talk about why, and a lot of that's due to the transaction activity that we're seeing. The last section, too, um, and one that I'm I I think will be particularly enlightening. Um, we're going to talk about the long term potential for virtual currencies, and when I say that. Um, it's going to be more of a macro level talk. So up until this, uh, up until part seven, it's going to be very micro. We're going to get into the weeds um, and, and talk about um, specifics. Um, but the last section, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and we're going to kind of view Bitcoin and what it means for the world at sort of a 30,000 feet view. So let's jump right in because I have a lot to get through here. So let's start part one. Um, this may be the most important slide in the presentation here. If you understand this, you understand more than 99% of people. So Bitcoin is actually two things. When, we, when I talk about Bitcoin, capital B, I'm talking about the peer-to-peer -peer payment system, the Bitcoin software itself. And when we talk about Bitcoins, uh, plural, lowercase b, we are talking about the currency that is transmitted on that payment system so, you know, the real-world analogy here is you can look at it like the highway system. So Bitcoin, Big B, is the interconnected network of roads and highways. Um, and Bitcoin, Little B, could be the cars that move on the highway system. So remember, Big B, Little B, understanding this simple, simple distinction, um, I think, is the key to understanding how everything else works and fits together. So keep this slide in mind as we move through the webinar. Um, how do online transactions work today? So I'm going to set the stage for how they work today, and then we're going to talk about how they work with Bitcoin, and you'll be able to see the difference. Um, suppose you're buying a TV online, let's say Amazon.com, and uh, for my purchase to be accepted by the merchant, the bank in the middle needs to verify that I actually have sufficient funds to make the purchase. If I'm paying with my debit card, if I'm paying with my credit card, that charge is going to go to the bank, and the bank's going to authorize that. So in this scenario, um, there's a trusted third party in the middle, and the merchant um, needs that trusted third party in the middle because they need to know that I have the money to buy the television. Um, unlike a cash transaction, um, you know, and, when, and I pay once, the money's gone. 
online transactions actually have the possibility of a double spend. If that third party wasn't there, it would it be possible for me to send one merchant, um, you know, a dollar for a TV, and then immediately a second after go back and send a second merchant that same dollar for another item. Um, this is called a double spend. Um, so. Without a trusted third party, there's no way for the merchant to verify that I have the funds or not. Um, so they rely on banks to tell them that, yes, this person has enough money to buy the product. So how does Bitcoin work? Bitcoin essentially erases the need for a trusted third party to verify funds. Um, so you're probably wondering, well, what, pre what, what prevents the double spend? What prevents me, uh, what prevents my customer from spending one dollar with me for a television and then immediately turning around and spending that same dollar on let's say a sofa so if you pop bitcoin's hood what you'll find underneath is what's called the blockchain now this is a real this is this is the this is this is not something that's talked about a lot um, the most publicized thing when you hear about bitcoin is probably the coins um, themselves but the blockchain is the real game-changing technology that makes Bitcoin what it is. Um, this is the most valuable piece of the Bitcoin network. So the blockchain is essentially a public ledger on which every Bitcoin transaction is recorded. Now this may seem surprising to some, but this ledger is public. You can actually go to blockchain.info and you can watch Bitcoin transactions happen in real time. They really are, every transaction really is public and searching the blockchain for a particular transaction is just like searching Google or, you know, the capital of South Dakota. Um, because each transaction is added to this blockchain, right? The network knows if I'm trying to spend the same Bitcoin twice. And so this, the blockchain, this public ledger is what prevents a double spend from occurring online. So, um, for folks listening on, in on the call, you may be saying to yourself, um, you know, okay, if the blockchain is essentially a ledger, wouldn't it be possible for somebody just to erase an entry or alter an entry? And technically, yes, um, that is true. Um, but to do that will require you to have a majority to control a majority of the computer power that runs the Bitcoin network. Um, so to put this in perspective, if you wanted to buy enough computers so that you could control a majority of the computer power of the Bitcoin network. As of yesterday, when I when I looked up the stat, you it would have it would cost you nine hundred and seventy two million dollars to buy enough computers to control a majority of the Bitcoin network. So even if you could somehow acquire that much, also um, there is no incentive to rewriting or erasing entries on the blockchain. Right, the second that uh, fraud is discovered, the price of Bitcoin would drop to zero because the trust of the network um, is compromised. So there really is no incentive to do that. So how are transactions added to the blockchain? So this slide introduces another major component of the Bitcoin network, um, which is called a miner. So a miner is just a computer that is connected to the Bitcoin network. Essentially, it's downloaded the Bitcoin software on the computer. And um, anyone listening to this webinar could actually be a miner tomorrow if you wanted to. Um, you would just need to download some software on your computer. Uh, miners are these computers that are out there, collect transactions, and they group them together in a block, and then they add that block to the public ledger. So here we have four transactions. We have A sending Bitcoin to B. We have uh, C sending Bitcoin to D, E to F, and G to H. So when A, C, E, and G send those Bitcoins to the, to the respective recipient, though that transaction, that send, gets broadcast to the network. And miners are essentially grabbing these newly broadcast transactions, um, and they're putting them into a block of transactions, okay? and then they're adding that to the chain. So let's talk a little more about miners. So there are thousands of miners out there. There are thousands, tens of thousands probably, if not hundreds of thousands, computers that are actively um, adding or attempting to add transactions to the blockchain. Um, 
but before a miner can add a block of transactions 